Well, turning now to the latest devastation caused by Hurricane Fiona, which is now a Category 4 storm. It is now headed towards Bermuda after slamming the Turks and Caicos Islands with heavy winds and rain. And in Puerto Rico, more than a million people are still without power following the storm's landfall on Monday. CBS News correspondent David Begno is there with the very latest. David, good morning. Vlad, good morning. We are in Vega Baja, California, which is west of San Juan. And we came here because actually we heard that there was a man who died in this area because of carbon monoxide from a generator. You drive really anywhere around the island and you hear generators running. But as some people will tell you, it's a privilege to be able to afford to have a generator in, a first, in the first place, right? So we've been here for the last 48 hours or so. The storm is now completely and fully gone. But you know what they're dealing with? Heat. The heat index is supposed to be above 100 degrees today. You've got nearly everyone on the island without power, 800 or so thousands, 800,000 or so people without water. Here's what we've seen over the last 24 hours. We set out from San Juan to Lajas. That's a town on the southwestern side of Puerto Rico, right near where Hurricane Fiona made landfall. How long have you lived here? 25 years. In the hills above Lajas, we met Olga Vega right outside her home. She and her daughter rode out the storm in the bathroom. Part of her tent roof was ripped off, but her problems don't end with the hurricane. It's very dangerous here. This is was because of the tremors. Oh, because of the earthquake. Yeah. She reminded us that this area has been dealing with small earthquakes for the last two years. How are you doing emotionally? I am beginning to feel weak. I have nothing. I don't have clean coats and everything is out of place. No water, no power, no, no roof. No water, no power. And she is not alone. The vast majority of Puerto Ricans are still without power. Roughly half don't have water. Is there any more flooding in Lajas? No. It was the mayor of Lajas, Jason Martinez, who took us around saying people weren't waiting on the government to show up. They were helping each other clean up quickly. Martinez is a former electric lineman who helped to restore power after Hurricane Maria five years ago. He made this prediction now. Maybe two months to be uh, re ready to, to get light again. Oh, you think it'll take two months? Two months, yeah. Wow. Okay. Right From Lajas, we flew east over the municipality of Jalco and saw part of what one expert called the worst hit to Puerto Rico's agriculture industry in 20 years. Fields of plantains, bananas, dairy products, all underwater and ruined. Then we landed in Salinas, where Puerto Rico's Governor Pedro Pierluisi had just arrived. My assessment is that this, a substantial majority of the customers will get their power back by the end of the day tomorrow. Really? Yeah. So they'll hold him to it. We'll see what happens. Uh, by the way, I said Vega Baja, California earlier. I meant Puerto Rico. Back to you. Uh, that's all right, David. Hey, uh, you know, that's pretty promising news about people getting their power back. I, I would say that's very different than in the aftermath of Hurricane Maria. Um, you covered both this and that hurricane. How is the response different? I would say it's different in terms of the mayors seemingly being able to and willing to jump, so to speak, right? So after Hurricane Maria, they couldn't even talk to the governor. Mayors couldn't talk to each other. Police officers couldn't even radio back to the police station. I, I've had the cell phone work everywhere we've been, every part of the island we've been to. We've had cell phone uh, service, data, and all of that. So that's significantly different. But there was a reporter actually uh, a colleague who works for WAPA TV here on the island who said to me yesterday in Lajas, he said, David, what's so different here is that after Maria, the people learned you can't wait on the central government or the federal government. You'd be waiting for weeks. So he said what was really different here was how they all came together and they were clearing off streets within 36 hours. They were setting up places to deliver water within 24 hours. Uh, so that is so notably different um, compared to Maria five years ago. Mm. Yeah, and, and David, you're, you're currently in Vega Baja, and I know you've been talking to a lot of people there, and certainly the power um, and electricity, and for people who've had the roofs of their homes blown off, uh, that's a real major concern. But I wonder about sort of the immediate concerns, like food and water. Um, are, are markets open? Are people able to get to those markets if roads are flooded? 
Yeah, so we're seeing restaurants, Vlad, that are open, not just in the metropolitan area where a majority of the people live, but in Lajas yesterday. In fact, before, before we talked to the mayor, right across the street, there was a place that was like, you know, serving sandwiches and people sitting outside. You wouldn't know that a, a storm moved through. So what I'm starting to get a little worried about is uh, the data plan is starting to drop a little bit. Calls mm. are starting to drop. It's harder to get data through, send messages and emails, right? And so, uh, listen, I'm not sure if the governor is trying to just be optimistic or if he knows more than we know and he's not giving in on the details. If the power comes back on, great. If this starts lasting for days, I mean, I, I remember, guys, when, when um, the telephone towers were running out of diesel, right, and people were standing under them after Maria trying to get a signal. So I, I, I don't want to be the bearer of bad news here, you know, try and create hysteria, but I just wonder if it doesn't come on, what else are we going to start to see fail? Make sense? Yeah. It makes a lot of sense. Yeah. Listen, you know, you covered a lot of the aftermath of Maria and the cleanup of Puerto Rico. And then, you know, we saw this dramatic video. He of shared this it on his, bridge. Uh, on his social media, David. Right, yeah. that this bridge that was built after um, Maria being completely swept away, mm. you would think the bridge would have been built in order <laughs> in anticipation to, of, of the next hurricane. Right. I'm just curious about whether or not you have any information about that bridge. You know, what happened when it got swept away? Were people stranded or those people? Okay, anything you can tell us. I'm so glad you're asking about that bridge, and I'm even happier that I have the information for you. Robbie, who's a fixer producer for us here on the island, can you come just for a second? Because you know the information, and I want to make sure I get it right. So stand close to me, and it will pick up the audio. This is Robbie Cortez, everyone. Um, the information regarding the bridge in Utuado, yeah. right? Correct me if I'm wrong, but the National Guard had basically put in what was to be a temporary bridge. Exactly. And it wasn't really battened down, so to speak, as well as it should have been, right? Because yep. it was supposed to be temporary. Exactly. <clears throat> and the bridge, the permanent bridge that they were going to use federal funds to build, wasn't going to start until next year. Until 2024. 2024, so two yeah. more years. Yeah. Okay, but, but the reality here, guys, is... I, you know, and it, maybe this is me being overly critical, and so tell me if you agree. It's been five years. Why, why is it right. taking five right. years to build that right. particular bridge, right? Mm -hmm. Couldn't that have been done sooner? Yeah, that was the question, because I saw that video on your social, David, and I just thought to myself, okay, generally when things uh, are rebuilt in the aftermath of a devastating natural disaster, yes. you even if it's temporary, you know that it's going to serve exactly. a community, and so you want to make sure, because hurricanes happen every single year, well, well, and, and we, we know, know the months that they happen in. We know when we're, right. And we know that they're getting worse every year. It's one thing if it's going to tie people over for one year, but as you guys point out, Five years? That's not temporary anymore. Mm -hmm. That's the bridge. That's the bridge. <laughs> yeah. Exactly. So, so Robbie, are so they're wait saying 10 years for the bridge. So now they're so so Robbie, I guess yeah. the question is, what will I mean, the next temporary bridge <laughs> has to be a little bit more it, it can't be temporary. How about just put a bridge? Just put a bridge. One down. that's not temporary. Well, and, 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 and that's the thing. The next bridge coming in two years has is, is got to be sturdier. If, if you don't mind, I want to ask Robbie. He's got an elderly mother, and he's got a sister with MS who lives on the southern part of the island. Yeah. Are they both without power? Yes, they are. They are. And your sister lives in, like, a nursing home. Yes. Yeah. Your mother lives in a rural area. How yeah. are they? Uh, they are good, but, you know, they're, they're, the thing that is the power is really needed because, you know, there, there are certain needs, for example, for my sister, in terms of uh, of her care, yeah. that, that are really necessary in order for, for her to have a, a good living in a way. You know, she has a lot of pains, mm -hmm. so she needs some some accommodations on her bed in order sure. for for the for the for the pain not to be intense mm -hmm. because that's the that's the thing. And that's that why is. we talk about that sense of urgency. As a Puerto Rican, what is it like to be going through seemingly a blackout, no water yet again, five years later? <sighs> It's a, a, a never-ending struggle, really, because, you know, we, we, just, we just went through Maria, and it was really a hard, the hardest struggle of our lives, and, and we thought that maybe five years later, things will be, will be better, and then this came, then Fiona came, and we thought, category one a hurricane, no problem. Yeah, there is a problem, because the systems are not working. Uh, and you know we're, we're having we're having to struggle again. Mm. 
we're here for you, and I thank you for working with us on this. And by the way, Robbie's staying at a hotel with us where we have power and, and water, uh, thankfully. Uh, before I toss it back to you, I, I'm just thinking about a woman who reached out to me last night. Her mother's an ALS patient in San Juan, bedridden, um, on a ventilator. And she said, David, if I can't get my mother some kind of consistent power in the next 36 hours, I'm going to have to take her out of this building. And all three of the elevators are down. Wow. They're not working. So I don't know how I'm going to get her down 16 flights of stairs. Yes. Anyway, I, it, there are just so many stories um, like that. Yeah. Uh, David, thank you. And thank Robbie. I mean, uh, uh, knowing that his family uh, is going through what they're going and that he still turns up every day to help you do the journalism that you do, yeah. you and Sean and the rest of the crew there, uh, we are so appreciative to him and, of course, to you as always. But just knowing that he's just one of many in Puerto Rico who are dealing with similar issues in the wake of Maria first and now Fiona, uh, uh, we just you know, thank them very much for both of us. I sure will.